big old breakfast. Mmm, my god. It's like a fried bomb of goodness. We got pancakes, sausage, bacon, eggs, this, and that. My guess is probably 3,000 calories right here. But yeah, I lost a brother and sister to diabetes. Okay. And so, you know, I got diagnosed with type 2 diabetes as well. And they accept DBT here. Yeah. Government is funding diabetes and obesity. It's on TLC's My 600 Pound Life and weighed over 700 pounds. Sausage biscuits and sausage with muffins, shots brown, Dr. Pepper, that's what they're talking about. Wendy's, Diabetic Baconator, food. and the Baconator combo. Konnichiwa, minasan. Kyo desu. So in today's video, we're checking out the YouTube channel Tyler Oliviera. And in this video, he checks out the most obese city in America. Excited to watch this video, but before that, guys, just make sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. Fat people. Over 40% of America is obese. Yes. Putting almost one of every two Americans at extreme risk of heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, Ooh. cancer, and death. But I wonder yeah. why are Americans getting so fat? So Ooh. I drove to McAllen, Texas, the fattest city in America, six years in a row, to see if I could find any answers. But first, I needed some breakfast. What a burger. What do people usually get for breakfast? That's crazy. Uh, so people usually get this for breakfast. Yeah, this is very hard. 980 calories. Really? Yeah. All right, McDonald's breakfast. Yeah, the guy in front of us is a pretty big dude. What did the last guy get? I'll get whatever he got. He got a bacon and Thank you. Calories in this meal? It's probably 1,000. Breakfast number three. Menu's looking fattening. Like the kind of breakfast. Is that what a lot of people get? Yeah. All right, breakfast for you. After scarfing down a fattening, thousand calorie plus breakfast an average american might eat on their way to work i it's wonder if the local restaurants here were any healthier what do people typically get here for breakfast dave's breakfast two eggs dave's breakfast yo quiero uno por favor it's a big old breakfast mm, my god it's like a fried bomb of goodness we got pancakes sausage bacon eggs this and that my guess is probably 3,000 calories right here. Bro, I should have karma. Almost <laughs> oh, 6,000 calories. The restaurant's breakfast here, no better than the fast food. I went to the nearby mall to ask the locals here why all the food down here is so fattening, but I found this instead. I'm not sure who's renting these, but you have giant scooters, so you gotta be lazy as hell to not even Jeez. walk. Jeez. All right, I'm renting one. That's why Americans are fat. We don't walk as nearly as much as other countries. Do a lot of people rent these scooters at the mall? Is this like a McAllen specific thing? Uh, yeah. I do feel like Hikokado Avocado right now, I'll be honest. Cruising on a scoozer built to help morbidly obese people move around the mall. I thought I was in Wally for a second, but the question was, do you know why McAllen's the obesity capital? Uh, wow. Food. Okay. They don't walk. Why are people so big? Yep. Uh, people like to eat junk food, like chips or McDonald's and all this stuff. Oh, and then, out of nowhere, I met this guy. Oh, yeah, do you have any thoughts? Yeah. Uh, Alright, Sarah. What's your name? David. David. How are you doing, David? Good, I'm a children's book author, actually. Okay, tell me about it. What's going on? Uh, un momento, por favor. It's to help the nation. You wanna go outside? Yeah. You wanna hop on here? Alright, tell me about yourself. What's going on? So, yeah, I lost a brother and sister to diabetes. Okay. And so, you know, I got diagnosed with type 2 diabetes as well. And wow. so that inspired me to write a children's book okay. that encourages kids to eat healthy and exercise. The book is called The Adventures of Exo and Sai, like exercise. I like that. And wow. uh, so, Exo and Sai live in a town called OB City, like obesity, where the mayor is Diane Beach wow. with diabetes. I'm trying to do my part to get people to change the way they eat. Do you have any places maybe you could show us around here, Miguel? Of course, yeah. Yeah? I'd love to. Yeah, you're a blessing. <laughs> you guys seriously are a blessing, man. Right on. So, David agreed to show me some of the reasons and places making the people of McAllen so fat. Okay, so from birth to adulthood, why are people getting fat out here? It's the food, it's the Mexican culture. It's like at the start of every good Mexican dish is a good handful of lard. I'm not I'm not sure. joking with them. Yes. Refried beans, rice, tortillas. And then you got that mentality where you know you have to finish everything on your plate. Yeah. This is see, see right here, this is you can see all those pastries right there and we got a ton of pastries here. Yeah. This is a uh, diabetes speed run, right? Oh yeah. Look at that right there. This place truly is obese, obese. Like uh, over 40% of the population down here in the Rio Grande Valley is either half. diabetic or pre diabetic. Look at that. Let's Jeez. see a taco. Let's see a taco. Like someone might eat for lunch here. Oh, yeah. Look at the calories. God damn. How are you doing? Yes, what's up? Oh, we're filming a documentary about obesity in America, and we're showcasing the tacos here as a prime facilitator of obesity and in turn premature death. 
Full be quick. Uh, the beef fajita taco has close to a thousand calories right there. Got it. Yeah, to a panaderia. Panaderia, they just serve a lot of uh, Mexican uh, bakery goods. And you'll notice one thing too. No calorie count out here. EBT is a snap also, so you can imagine, you know, the government allowing people to come and use food stamps. They accept EBT here. Yeah. The government is funding diabetes and obesity. That's are you crazy. Are you? Um, what are you getting? For the concha. The concha. Tenemos un investigación diabetes in Miguel. Si, she has diabetes and she's buying the product. Yeah, she's buying, she's buying it, I think, for her daughter, her granddaughter. Yeah. I doubt it. She's probably gonna have a snack of that too, right? Yeah, maybe. What should we have to next? Maybe a taqueria? Okay. Vamos! A papa taco. Every variation of taco imaginable. I'll try one un birria. Gracias. All right. Exceso calorías. Exceso azucares. Yeah, that's nice. That hits. Big old bite. I gotta say, I'm mind blown because it's so tasty, but I know for a fact this is like a thousand calorie new. And after experiencing this fattening food firsthand, yeah. David invited me to his house to show me the reason he's so passionate about all this. But as an experiment, I wanted to see if I could snag food at the drive thru in less than 60 seconds on my way over there, proving that fast food is too easy to get your hands on, thus making America fat. Just to show you how dangerously quick fast food is, I want to see if I can get my fast food order in one minute. Ridiculously fast and way too convenient, thus leading to a nation full of obese people. After proving food is too accessible in America, I made it to David's house so he could show me why he's so passionate about destroying obesity. Started uh, doing it for these two people right here. That's my brother and sister, uh, Mary and Henry, who, who passed away yeah. from diabetes. So um, I don't want anybody to have to go through what my family's had to go through, losing yeah. a brother and a sister, having another sister go blind. It's a really tough thing to see mm -hmm. when the people that you love most eat healthy, exercise, and, and good things are going to happen. Okay, America has hope. America does have hope. After seeing obesity kill David's family, I flew to Florida to meet a guy named Mark who was on TLC's My 600 Pound Life and weighed over 700 pounds. At the end of the show, he lost 200 pounds and the doctor told him the only way he could lose more weight was to get a stomach reduction surgery. We're in Orlando, Florida. We're meeting up with Mark. See what a day in his life looks like. Right now, he's 487 pounds. We're going to see what got him here and what advice he might have for others. Yeah, how you doing? So your name's Mark. Mark, yes, sir. You were on the show, My 600 Pound Life, on TLC. Right. If you lose 184 pounds, you go to the doctor, and he says, hey, now you're at the point where we want you to do the weight reduction surgery, right? Yeah, I did everything the doctor asked. I lost weight. And he's like, okay, cool. You're approved for surgery. It's like, well, hold up. I'm kind of feeling this right now. Let me... Let me do this. It's like, okay, we'll go again. Go lose another 50 pounds. And I lost like 40 pounds, you know? It's like, okay, cool. Great job. Let's go get, let's get you in the surgery. And the surgery is a stomach reduction surgery? Yeah, they cut your stomach. Okay. He said I have a 5% chance with the surgery and a 0% chance without. Okay. And I knew that my f***ing work ethic alone is going to eliminate that 5% gap. So sure. F*** you. When did the weight get put on? The pandemic broke me. Okay. And this is where everything goes to shit. This is it, man. Okay. Let's walk through. That's cool. You lose your job and you're gaining a bunch of weight. Yeah. My life consisted of here, to there, to the bathroom, to my chair, out here, to the front door. Are you just locked in here, depressed? I'm pretty much just locked in here, depressed. This is my world. For me to go all the way, all the way to the other side of this little baby fucking cooler. Yeah. Fucking kill me. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. So, this is the graveyard of bad memories right here, this couch. This is where life was for a long time. Yeah, I used to be an athlete, man. Yeah. I, I could do the splits now. Can I see it? God damn it. But I wanted to understand how Mark got to 700 pounds in the first place. Can we pull up DoorDash? This is the COVID depression menu. We got McDonald's, 7-Eleven, McDonald's. McDonald's. Two sausage biscuits, two sausage McMuffin, Shax sure. Brown, Dr. Pepper, that's fucking Wendy's, Baconator, food. and the Baconator combo. You get, the, you get two of them. Little Caesars, pizza. And this is all the same day. Yeah. As soon as they contacted me back, I was like, all right, it's... It's time to go to work. Got it. Going to work at the time was literally being... What? Basically, Mark is saying that when my 600 pound life asked him to be on the show, he knew he had to get healthy or he was gonna die. I was like, get up, and I put on my shoes, socks, head out the door, I go to the gym. See, this is my breakfast right here. I'm not trying to lose 50 pounds to look good on a vacation. I'm fighting for my I, You tell somebody laying in a hospital bed that if you work hard, you're determined, and you stay consistent, change your life. I guarantee you every single person would stand up and fight to do that. 
So I went to the gym with Mark to experience an average day in his fight to become healthy again. Drove by eight times, took me the ninth time to come in. Let's go, Mark. Mark's workout, I had a lot more sympathy for what he goes through on a daily basis. And as Mark and I drove back to his parents' house, Mark did something he thought he'd never be able to do again. Uh -oh. What's that? I don't think. Oh, so you don't? Yeah, I don't think it's gonna fit on either. Six minute drive. Okay. Oh, I have a horse. Years, bro. Actually, for real. Yeah. of Mark's seatbelt echoing in my ears, I realized that if a 700 pound man can turn his life around, then so can America. Anyone can. It's possible, man. It's possible. Wow. As someone who's been uh, very chubby in various moments in my life, I haven't been obese, but I've been overweight. And I think for a lot of people who eat a lot, it's because they're depressed or they have some hidden trauma that eating is a way for them to cope with the problems that they have inside of them. I, for one, was a very emotional eater in which I would eat food to feel good because of a lot of the crappy things that happened in my life. I do believe exercise is important, but I do believe American culture very much cultivates this kind of obesity problem from the products that we eat to our lifestyle. A lot of American culture is about convenience. We're trying to make life as easy as possible for people. And I think in turn, if people aren't disciplined themselves, to be very healthy or live a very disciplined lifestyle, obesity is going to come eventually. After being in countries like Japan and Poland, in which they do a lot of walking, a lot of physical exercise, it's a no brainer why many other countries are relatively healthy compared to countries in the West like America. And I definitely know obese people would not survive in Japan considering Japan uh, Japanese people are very uh, skinny in stature. People like in this video would never survive in Japan because it doesn't accommodate really huge people but i definitely found this video interesting so let me know what you guys think in the comment section below so if you guys enjoyed the video please smash the like button smash the subscribe button also hit that bell as well to get notified whenever we post a video also check out his channel if you like the content arigatou gozaimasu mina kiyotsukete jane